Alright, welcome back Synatics, my name is Feral Synatic and today we are continuing Ace Academy! I'm excited to be back into this game and I hope you guys are too. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started! So I believe last we learned we left, wow, we're excited. last before we left off, uh, we had done studying and now we want to pick what we want to do. Obviously we want to go hang out with Yuna, right? Why not? Yuna pops into my mind and I decided to give her a call. I wonder how she's spending her reading week. Oh, that's right, it's reading week. She answers the phone almost immediately. Um, hello? Hey, Nina. Oh, I was in the middle of calling you when you called me. Does that mean you were thinking about me? Yes. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, good. This guy's a spirit animal. I'm a little surprised by how frank she is. Well, obviously, I was thinking about you, too. Would you like to come over? Sure, I'll be right there. Great. I'll see you soon. Do I know where she lives? We hang out by heading my bike and drive to Yuna's house. I know where she lives. Oh boy. After parking, I knock silently on her door. There's a shuffling on the other side, and it takes her a while before she opens the door a crack. No! Ooh. She slams the door shut. Oh, does she have a dog? Uh, that was strange. There are more noises on the other side of the door before Yuna flings it open. Hi. Hi? Hey. Hit the dog! Yes! Woof! Oh, it's a cat! I mean, oh, <clears throat> it's adorable. I still have that wriggling ball of fur trying to jump free from her arms. You have a dog? Now, top one. Let's be honest. Puppy! <laughs> Up in her arms, you know, lets the pup hop into them. And its tail slaps my body with each wag as the puppy tries to plant kisses all over my face. You didn't tell me you got a dog. I'm just borrowing him for now. Borrowing? Oh, that's not a new background we haven't seen yet. Or have we? Oh, actually, I think you did see this background once. Uh, you know, moves aside so I can enter and close the door behind me, and then she puts the puppy down. Just scampers to my leg and paws on my feet as I carefully make my way to that couch. You just sit down beside okay. me. Okay, not really borrowing. I've been volunteering at the local animal shelter since I moved to Isokaze. And when I found out they needed foster homes for some of their pets, I volunteered to take Mochi home with me. Mochi? As you can tell, he loves people. And he's already been housebroken. So they don't think it'll be long before he gets adopted. Mochi tries fruitlessly to hop onto the couch and misses each time. I said something a few more times, he sits back on his haunches and whines. Yuna giggles and scoops him up in his arms. He settles into her lap. How long you had him? About a week. Actually, I wanted to ask you about that. Hmm? I'll have to give him back next week, but I don't really want to. Oh, you want to adopt him? She nods and finally pets Mochi's head. The house doesn't feel so big and empty when he's around. Fair enough. I glance around the living room. The space is conservatively uh, decorated, but includes a lot of photographs of the family. Antique vases and cabinets tastefully fill the space. I wonder if these are family heirlooms or items passed down from generation to generation. Looking at all the smiling, uh, looking at all the smiling faces of Yuna, Yudai, and their parents, I understand why Yuna feels alone in such a big house. She's constantly reminded of the past. What did your parents say? Yuna bites her lip. I haven't told them yet. Are you even about fostering the puppy? No. <laughs> I guess she looks at the parents. Fair enough. I'm not sure what they'll say. We used to have dogs back when we still lived in the countryside, so it's not like I don't know how to take care of them. Maybe they won't even notice. Mochi's plush bed is in the corner where the kitchen and living rooms connect. Compared to the uh, rest of the decor, his colorful and modern toys stick out like a sore thumb. I think they might. She frowns and furrows her brow. Mochi seems to have a sense of anxiety and places a paws on her chest to lick her face again. Mochi! She turns her face away but laughs. Uh, let's ask your parents. Ah, oh, he loves you! Keep him! Look how happy he is. I think he likes you. I think so too. You should keep him. Your parents will understand. You two are meant for each other. She giggles. You might have some competition for my friend. <gasps> oh no! Never mind, he needs to go. <laughs> she laughs again. Looks like you've already made up your mind. Maybe. 
She pauses. It's not that I'm worried my parents will say no. I don't think they'd be opposed to the idea. I just... I don't want them to think they're bad parents. Eh? I understand why they don't stay here for too long. And I don't want them oh, to think I'm lonely. I got you. Are you lonely? It can be a little quiet. Why not one of the music? It went, it went silent. Whenever it, uh, well, whenever it starts feeling too quiet, you can always give me a call. I'll come and keep you company. She blushes. Thanks. We pause. You ever miss the countryside? She blinks in surprise. A little. I love Isokaze, but sometimes I wish we were a little closer to nature. What about you? I like indoor nature. I do too. Nature's kind of cool. I know what you mean. Whenever I need to clear my head, I like to sit in the garden of trees and think. Yuna smiles. Me too. Something about being away from the noise of everyday life is really soothing. I gotta readjust myself here. Ugh. Oh, my man boobs are there. Oh, focus camera. There we go. Me too. Something about being away. Oh, pfft. I was reading what she said. Oops. Why don't we do something to get away this weekend? Like what? Drugs. Just kidding. Don't do drugs. Don't do drugs. Uh, we could go camping. What about exams? We were studying hard for them all week. A break would be nice. Especially since we don't want to get burned out. Luna looks thoughtful as a smile gradually graces her lips. It doesn't sound so bad. Plus, I haven't gone in a while. I've been camping in a long time either. It's been years upon years. 24 years! Okay, not 24. Maybe... 14? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Uh, then it's about time, isn't it? Okay, let's do it. Machi yips and hops off uh, Yuna's lap. He races towards his bed of toys, sliding on the hardwood floors. <laughs> I think he wants to play. Uh, forget toys, play give belly rubs. Shit. Uh, <laughs> play tug of war? Mochi grabs his thick braided rope in his mouth, and I grab the other in and lightly tug. Mochi pulls back his tail, so wagging. I increase the pressure. Mochi pushes his weight back on his hind leg, so his butt is in the air. He growls affectionately as he shakes his head back and forth. Continually let go of my end of the rope, and the, end of the rope, and my end of the rope drops harmlessly on the ground. Mochi pauses, then cocks his head to the side as if asking what I'm doing. You were too strong. Yuna giggles. Mochi, you won. Oops. Now that he's all wound up, I should probably take him for a walk. So he doesn't accidentally wet himself. Smart. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. Do you want to join? I glance out of the window at the darkened sky. I should probably get back before it gets too late. Walk with a dog. You're gonna nod. Thanks for coming over. No problem. Bye, Mochi. You're gonna pick us up one of Mochi's paws and waves it around. Bye bye. <laughs> we'll laugh as Mochi looks down at his paw in confusion. Like, what are you talking to me for, woman? Uh, Yuna grabs a leash and secures it around Mochi's neck, and we leave the house together. She heads towards a park while I head to my bike and drive home. Should have went with her! You don't have a curfew? I have to park my bike and let myself into the house. The living room is empty. What is that noise? Where is everybody? I hear voices in the kitchen and hurry over. I pause as soon as I push open the doors. Nikki is bent over the table laughing at Yuki stands by the fridge laughing as hard as Nikki while Uncle Kato chugs water looking increasingly confused. Oh hi Yuki I didn't know you were here. And Yuki tries to compose herself when she sees me rushed over to give me a hug. Oh good you're home. What happened? Oops I got some flour on you. Uh it's okay. Uncle Kato's eyes are watering as he lunches towards the fridge and pulls out a carton of milk. Oh, here's something spicy. Uh, are you okay, Uncle Kaito? He doesn't answer as he chugs a fresh glass of milk. Nikki finally composes herself enough to answer. Aunt Yuki's making his Chinese food tonight. She ran one of the chilies around the rim of Uncle Kaito's glass when he wasn't looking. Oh, that's messed up! What the hell are you doing? You scared the shit out of me. Damn, dog! <laughs> uh, she starts laughing again. It doesn't hit you at first. Once it does. Uncle Kata takes another swig of milk while Aunt Yuki giggles. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. That's mean. Her laughter is infectious, and I find myself laughing with. Oh, shit. Oh, not mad. Oh, I'm screwing it up. Lots of infectious, I find myself laughing with them. It's good to see Aunt Yuki hasn't lost her sense of humor. 
Uncle Kaito, hasn't Yuki played the same prank on you before? She has. <laughs> That's what makes it so funny. It's been a while. Cut me some slack. You're losing your touch. Aunt Yuki's been away for too long. Nikki sighs. Do you really have to leave again, Aunt Yuki? It's so fun when you're around. Hey, are you saying I'm not fun? No, you're fun too. That sounded awfully like a pity compliment. Nikki giggles. Uh, Yuki fidgets with the corner of her apron. Actually, you'll all be seeing a lot more of me. Kato looks at her in surprise. Really? She meets his gaze and nods. If that's all right with you. Of course. I, I just... Does that mean you're really going oh, to stay Oh, yes! Oh, they made up! Yeah. Unless there's a reason why I shouldn't. No. What? Kato hesitates, Nikki watching with bated breath. Her eyes are wide with excitement, and I can tell it's taking a lot of self-control for her to keep quiet. I'm not sure if I should even be witnessing this conversation. And Yuki seems to understand Uncle Kaito's unspoken question. Watching you with the kids, you've uh, changed. Oh, yes! Yuki, I... Nikki can't hold it anymore and explodes! Aunt Yuki belongs here, Uncle Kaito. Let her stay. Both Yuki and Kato blush deeply. Nikki! What? You clearly need my help. <laughs> what is it? You don't have a boyfriend? But you got Kian! <laughs> so, you maybe have a boyfriend. Let's give this some privacy. I begin to push her out of the room. But... <laughs> no buts. Reluctantly, Nikki follows me. Uh, allows me to lead her out of the kitchen into the living room. We both sit on the couch and I turn on the TV. Do you think Aunt Yuki will really stay? Of course! Yeah, she obviously still cares for Uncle Kaito, and he still cares for her. Let me feel that once she comes back, she won't be going anywhere. I hope so. Then we'll be a family again. It's good stuff. I glance at Nikki. She looks hopeful, yet apprehensive. Again? We've always been a family. I know, but it wasn't the same without Aunt Yuki around. It felt incomplete somehow, like Uncle Kaito was missing a part of himself. Fair enough. It'll definitely be more interesting having her back. Wait, we wait in silence every so every so often. Nikki can sneak glances at the door, but she doesn't move. I guess I can't ignore the delicious smell of Kung, Fu, uh, Kung Pao chicken wafting out of the kitchen. My stomach grumbles loudly. I kind of wish they weren't having this conversation. I kind of wish they were having this conversation after we'd already eaten. Nikki like giggles. Are you ever not hungry? I'm a growly boy. Thank you very much. Ha! Her eyes widen and her stomach grumbles just as loudly. Now it's my turn to laugh. Luckily, we don't have to wait much longer before y Aunt Yuki pops her head out. Are you kids hungry yet? Of course we are. Starving. Then I guess we'd better feed you. Dinner's ready. I jump to my feet and race to the kitchen, but Nikki lingers beside Aunt Yuki. Does this mean you're staying? Of course I'm staying. There's no way I'm going to let Kato keep you kids to himself. Oh, is it Kato? Oops. Nikki grins from ear to ear and hugs Aunt Yuki tightly. I'm so happy! There will finally be another woman in the house! <laughs> Aunt Yuki laughs as the two of them join us at the table. I don't know how you managed all by yourself. How rude! Me neither. Everyone is all smiles as they sit down to eat. After dinner, Nikki dragged Aunt Yuki upstairs to show her the new dress she bought last week. Uncle Kato and I are watching TV. Oh, the middle of the show, his phone dings with an email. As he opens the email, his jaw sets. Oh, no. What is it? It's an email from the PI. What does it say? He holds the phone out for me to see, and we review the email together. Again, the content... Just not sure much, but it stresses the accident might have been more than just an accident. The other driver had been spotted talking to Dad right before the car crash. Uh-oh. Wait, someone wanted to hurt Dad on purpose? Kato's voice is grim. That seems to be what the PI is implying. Why would... Why would he want to hurt them? I wish I knew. Wasn't the other driver someone your dad knew? Yeah. 
uh, Ezra Wilson was dad's colleague. They worked closely on projects together. It's about the freaking corn eagle! I know it! Did something happen between them? Not that I know of, and we can't even ask him since he's still in a coma since the last I heard. I put an extra word in there. Whoops. Uh, Kaito nods. Well, the PI is still investigating. I'm sure he'll have more information soon. No, this is making any sense. I swear Dad worked on the same project together for as long as I can remember. He always seemed like a nice guy. I can't imagine he'd want to hurt Dad. Does this mean Dad knew this was coming too? But how could he? He only left because Nikki called him. And what about Mom? I let out a frustrated sigh. I wish he'd just tell me what happened. Wait a minute. Dad's research. The strange encryption in my core. Oh no! Uncle Kaito notices a change in my expression. What is it? I wonder if it has something to do with my core. Because of the weird thing it did during your first match? Maybe. If whoever wanted your dad dead was after your core, then you might be in danger. You probably shouldn't use Eagle again. That's not happening. Safe. I won't go that far. All my core did was use some extra energy packs. At least that's what my professor said. That's why the referees didn't disqualify me from the match. Hmm. Extra energy doesn't sound like something to kill over. Well, I thought exactly. I brought up a core for a different reason. It might be nothing, but our team engineer found a weird encryption from Dad in my core. She didn't think it's anything important, but now I'm not sure. What does it say? I don't know. He nods. I tried to refocus on the TV show, but I can't stop thinking about the accident on purpose. I think I'm just gonna go to bed. All right. Try not to stress too much about this. I promise we'll find out what happened. I smile weakly. Thanks, Uncle Kato. Okay, so question. Voice actors and voice actresses kind of have different pronunciations of the names. Pretty sure Nikki calls him Kaito, but hey, Yuki called him Kato. So I'm going back to Kaito. After saying goodnight, I get ready for bed and slip under the blankets. I close my eyes, trying to clear my mind, but end up running through every detail of the accident I remember, hoping to find a clue. Eventually, I fall asleep out of pure exhaustion. <clears throat> no, okay, not yet. I slept with my alarm and I feel unusually energized this morning. Today is our match against Akira, and after the training session yesterday with Coach Ivan, I feel confident in our abilities. This should be an exciting match! After getting ready, I wolf down my breakfast and drive to school. Yuna stop, uh, stops me on the way to the pre-combat room. Hey! Oh, hey, Yuna! I'm glad I ran into you. Can give you some good luck smooshes or something? Does a count? Uh, does a count run into me if you knew exactly where I would be? Yes! <laughs> she grins and thrusts her tablet in front of me. Do you mind filling out this survey really quickly? Survey for what? The session with Coach Ivan. Since yesterday's guest coach was a new initiative for Dashu, they like to gauge how valuable you all thought the uh, session was. It worked out pretty well for us. I've managed to track down everyone else, so yours is the last form I need. Okay. I take a minute to fill out the survey. Once I finish, I hand the tablet back to Yuna. Thanks. No problem. I'm kind of impressed that Dashu would go the extra mile to get someone like Coach Ivan to consult for a non-professional team. You know, smiles. That's one of the reasons I like them. They seem pretty cool. I wonder how they got him to agree. Oh, it was easy. All I had to do was call. Wait, what? Yeah, I found his contact information online and figured it couldn't hurt to reach out. I asked his manager if this was something they'd be interested in, and luckily it was. Then I introduced the idea to Dashu, along with the proposal I'd put together. After that, it was just a matter of getting their approval and support with logistics. You put all of this together? Yuna blinks surprised and blushes. It wasn't all me. But the idea was yours. Actually, you helped out with some logistics for the Dashu event before the Z concert too. Yeah, but it was for stuff involving the team. I wanted to make sure you guys were getting properly introduced and represented. Yuna, you're amazing! She blushes even deeper. It was nothing, really. Anyway, thanks for filling this out. Sure, I better go in now. Kayori is probably about to blow a ve blood vessel waiting for me. She nods and gets on her toes and kisses me. Oh! For luck. Oh, yes! 
Hmm, maybe I need another. She grins and our lips meet again. Now you absolutely can't lose. <laughs> we won't. She was goodbye before heading towards the stadium while I head into the pre-combat room. All right, here's everybody. Quickly changed my pilot's outfit and joined the rest of my team at the hollow table. Kyori is busy plotting out the arena and our respective gears as everyone else silently watches. It's finally starting to set in what we're being matched against. That we are being matched against. That we were. That we're being matched against the top pilot of ace. Confidence that I felt earlier wanes. Judging by the face of my teammates, I'm not alone in this feeling. With a couple of seconds, Kayori takes a step back from the hollow hollow the holograph and looks at her over her handiwork. Okay, this is what the war game layouts will be. As you all know, we'll be facing against Reborn, Akira's team. Mayu, can you report on their gear composition and weaponry? Are you nods and her fingers dart across the hollow table. Reborn is fully sponsored by Eludian Enterprises, which means they provide Reborn with the same cutting edge weaponry that they provide their professional teams. Each gear is kitted out for specific purposes. That means individually they may have weaknesses, but as a unit they cover each other's vulnerabilities. Hold on, we may have actually lucked out. Mayu shoots Shell a questioning look. Well, you know how they're smashing everyone in terms of points? Win or lose, they're still going to be the number one seeded team. Okay, how does that help us? This happened last year as well. When Reborn was guaranteed the first ranked spot, they subbed in their backup pilots. Really? I didn't even notice. It's not a well-known fact because their four-man gear equipment is always the same. But if you dig into their pilot history, you'll see it. Yeah, but they're going against us, and I think Akira has respect for us. So I think that's not going to happen. And the stats show that when they started putting in their subs, their overall performance did decline, even if it was just a little. So, what you're saying is that we'll be fighting against their backups, since they already have a guaranteed first seed? Everyone but Phoenix. Phoenix? Akira's gear. Only he pilots it. Sounds about right. I was surprised by the show, he certainly didn't provide the same input in our previous matches as he did this one. Even when one of our matches was against his own teammate, this match must really mean something to him. We can use this in our favor. Uh, we'll press any advantage we can get. Kyori nods. Agree. Okay, so we can definitely use the- Score advantage. Kyori changes up some of the notes on the hollow table. I have an idea. What if we employ the same tactic we did against Tatsuo's team? Focus down Akira. Mayu shakes her head. That won't work. Claw of the Wild's team is Tatsuo. However, every member of Reborn is going to be strong even without Akira. True, but Akira still surpasses the rest of his team in terms of skill. Instead of focusing Akira, what if we try to pull him out and play a 3v3 against the other members? Who's going to handle 1v1 with Akira? We all look at each other, although none of us want to admit it. It's definitely clear that he would beat any one of us in a duel. I could do it. We might not be able to beat him in a straight match, but at least I have my overdrive mode as a pocket ace again. Kyori nods. And since we haven't used it since the qualifiers, they definitely won't be expecting that. The question is, is it going to work? That's right. As long as you keep Akira busy, we have a strong chance of beating the rest of the team and then helping you with Akira. This isn't going to go well. <clears throat> it won't be that easy, but I think this is our best chance at winning. We hash out the details of the plan on the hollow table. Remember not to immediately activate your overdrive mode when you start. Of course, I nod. I'll be on a timer once it activates three minutes, so I should use it wisely. Exactly. Let's recap then. We'll create distance between the three of us and Eagle with suppressive fire. We'll make it impossible for them to even attempt to gang up. If they stick together, we can keep our distance and trap them in crossfire. When they start to create distance with one another, Eagle will hard engage Phoenix. And we'll do the same with our respective opponents. Positioning will play a big part. We'll have to capitalize on the fact that Akira doesn't have as much team cohesion practice with the sub it's as not be a with subs. regular starters. Kyori looks at me. You'll keep Akira engaged as long as you can, and we'll use the overdrive mode if it starts to look bad. A nod. That leaves the rest of us with three on three. It'll be a tough match, but we should be able to beat reborn substitute pilots without Akira there. 
What if Broseph goes down? A valid concern. We should plan that out too. Depending on the battle condition, it might be worth going for the saver points if things aren't in our favor. Also true. You mean take out the weakened gears instead of going for a win? Carry crushes arms but knots. Not like a surprise. Judging by the sour look on her face, I can tell the strategy isn't ideal for her, but Kaori from before would never have considered it. She then looks at Mayu. I agree. That would be the best course of action. We win and gang up on Akira afterwards, otherwise we go for the safe points instead of trying for the win. Brosif fights Akira, we fight the other three. <laughs> that was backwards, okay. Correct. Show nods. Alright, got it! My nerves are still jumping, but I feel positive about our plan. We can do this! Everyone stares on Mayu, she blinks and pokes two fingers together. Uh, I mean, if we try... <laughs> the team laughs. Ever since she got together with Sho, she's been a lot more confident. I'm really happy for her. You learn uh, you'll ring signaling for us to get to our stations. Let's go! After one deep breath, I follow Kaiori out of the room. Most matches during reading week. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to call it here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.